Yeah, so, so 2011 is over, 2012 is now just over a month old, and uh, so how's your, uh, how's your uh, new year doing, nuclear industry? In the best of the rest of the news, earlier this week, California's San Onofre nuclear power plant had to be unexpectedly shut down after radioactive water was discovered leaking out of the plant's Unit 3 reactor. Officials claim the leak is fully contained within the concrete dome of the plant. This comes at the same time that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is warning that aging nuclear plants in the eastern and central portion of the United States might not be able to withstand an earthquake or its after effects. We're all aware of how an earthquake and subsequent tsunami ravaged the Fukushima nuclear power plant in Japan, causing radiation leakage and poisonings. The NRC is giving operators at vulnerable nuclear plants four years here in the United States to conduct seismic tests to determine if their plants can withstand an earthquake. However, nuclear energy critics argue that the NRC is moving too slowly to address the threat to the nation's nuclear plants and that as a result there is the possibility of a Fukushima level disaster happening in the United States. Joining me now to discuss the nation's aging nuclear infrastructure and the NRC's new warning and what's going on in California is Kevin Camps, radioactive waste watchdog with Beyond Nuclear Org. Kevin, welcome. Thank you. Great to have you with us. With regard to the San, is it Onofre? San Onofre. San Onofre plant. Uh, why should we worry about them venting radioactive steam? Well, any exposure to radioactivity carries a health risk. The higher the dose, the greater the risk, but these risks accumulate over a lifetime. So when the Nuclear Regulatory Commission or Southern California Edison says, oh, it was very low levels, barely detectable, well, the thing is, people live downwind, they live downstream, and we're being exposed to tritium from San Onofre yesterday, from Byron, Illinois, a couple days ago, mm. from Prairie Island, Minnesota, a few days ago, they announced, they let be known, that last November they had overflowing tritium, and the Prairie Island Indian community lives hundreds of yards away from this facility. That's incredible. So, uh, we've got a tritium atom here behind. <laughs> what is tritium? Why should we care? Tritium is radioactive hydrogen. It goes anywhere that hydrogen goes, which is everywhere. In your body? In your body, in the environment. It can go down to the DNA level inside your body, and it packs a pretty powerful punch at the DNA level or in your cells that would, that or your That would organs. be the, the, uh, the electrons and particles and whatnot. It's a beta emitter, on. but if you were to listen to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission or the nuclear industry, they treat tritium like it's not even radioactive, or they say, well, you know, it's mildly radioactive and it dilutes into the environment. Wait a minute, beta emitter, it's throwing off a proton? It's, it's a beta emitter and at those intimate levels it does significant health damage. It's a clinically proven cause of cancer, birth defects, and genetic damage. Right, I mean that, that would knock, that, if it hit DNA it could knock one of the amino acids right out of the chain and, and put a hole in it. And the reason that, you know, these are leaks, these are steam generator leaks of radioactive uh, tritium, steam into right. the environment as they try to get these things back under control. But they allow these uh, tritium releases on a regular basis by permit because they can't filter it out. It's such a small uh, atom, hydrogen, right. it can pass through certain it's grades small, of steel, it's the, actually. It's the second smallest thing there is. I mean, yeah. Helium and hydrogen, right? It's and so, yeah, they're having these leaks, but they let this be discharged into the rivers, into the oceans, into the air on a regular basis, and it's doing its health damage downwind and downstream. That's incredible. And so there's no way to filter it, there's no way to stop it, there's no way to block it, and so they just say, don't worry, be happy. Do they even bother to detect it? Well, uh, that was one of the misleading statements made by the NRC in Illinois at Byron with this radioactive tritium steam being emitted. Uh, that was because of a fire. And uh, in that case, they said, hey, we know that the tritium levels aren't high because the radiation monitors aren't picking it up. Well a group that we work with called Nuclear Energy Information Service did an immediate FOIA to the state and the state of Illinois said we don't have monitors on site that can detect tritium we have to send that out to a lab so we don't know what the levels are yet so the deception is just all too commonplace. So they don't even monitor for the stuff because there's no way to filter it out so they're all... So well they like do some monitoring they do sampling but it takes time to get the results back so when they said it's all safe you can't say that a radioactivity release is safe that's, no safe. that's a misnomer there's no safe level of exposure to radioactivity. Right. They've, they've done a cost-benefit and they've decided it's acceptably risky right, yeah, in their like opinion. off x-ray porno scanners they know that you know a hundred Americans are probably going to get cancer from them well you know that's worth you know not having a terrorist incident. Um, uh, new lids, steam generators, what's, what's the deal with this? It's, uh, this is a San Onofre? Well, 
The amazing thing about this steam generator tube rupture at San Onofre uh, is that this is a new steam generator. These are just over a year old, mm. and they've had, they have defects, and they're failing. These were supposed to last like 25 years. It's just over a year old. So we're seeing the same thing at Three Mile Island. We're seeing the same thing at Arkansas Nuclear One. N brand new steam generators. These are major organ transplants. The old ones were too degraded to keep using. Right. So they put new ones in, and these are failing. So these decades-old reactors... Where are these things made? Well, the one at San Onofre, uh, I don't know for sure, but the one at Three Mile Island in Arkansas Nuclear One, that's a French product. That's Arriva of France that supplied huh. those steam generators. And they're not working here? These, uh, you mentioned lids, brand new lids from a company called Babcock and Wilcox Canada have been installed on six reactors, but we know from the Palisades reactor in Michigan that their brand new lid from the same factory is defective. So they didn't put it on. They have an old corroded lid that they're sticking by, which is frightening, because they're too worried about this new lid being so defective. But six reactors, including Beaver Valley in Pennsylvania, put lids from this factory on their reactors, and we don't know if those were defective or not. They could be. And we won't know until what? Well, we're seeing tube ruptures at San Onofre. If you have a domino effect, a cascade of tube ruptures, and there's thousands of these tubes in these steam generators, right. you could have a loss of coolant accident in the core, which could lead to a meltdown, which could lead to China syndrome, uh, burn through containment, and a catastrophic radioactivity release. So it, could become, it could become Fukushima uh, worse than Fukushima or well you could have a full actually we don't know yet how bad Fukushima is going to get I mean, if you have a bad enough uh, steam generator failure and we had a close call at Indian Point near New York City it was February of 2000 they blew a steam tube NRC had let them operate to the brink of failure hmm. and then it failed and if they had had a cascade I mean this is 25 30 miles from New York City they had another radioactive steam release at that time into the Hudson River Valley so these nukes are getting old and dangerous. Uh, we're in the breakdown phase of, of, of the nuclear, nuclear power in this country. Yeah. And, uh, wow. And now the NRC is saying, okay, you all have four years to check out these plants and make sure that they're okay with an earthquake. We had an earthquake here in Washington, D.C. a few, a few months ago. Yeah, August I mean, 23rd, uh, the North Anna plant had damage on the site. They only inspected one of the reactors and let both of them restart, assuming that the other one was the same as the other one. They had damage to their radioactive waste storage. We had to climb all over the Washington Monument and find every single crack. They're not checking the nuclear plants. It was a very quick turnaround restart, and we're seeing that at Davis Bessie in Ohio. They have a cracked concrete shield building, and they let them restart anyway, even though they don't know the root cause, they don't know the extent of the cracking, and they don't know how to fix the problem. Wow. So the NRC is really outdoing itself. I mean, it's... This is a captive, uh, this is regulatory capture. This is very a much regulatory so. agency that's... Become, Taking huge risks on yeah. these hasty restarts. Amazing. Kevin, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. It's great to see you. Nuclear power is the most dangerous and most expensive form of electric power generation in the world and would not exist in the United States without massive taxpayer subsidies and guarantees in the Price-Anderson Act and other legislation. It's time for all of us to say... No nukes. But uh, I want to talk about domestically, as, as I often do, because uh, whether we want to talk about uh, an incident in Wolf Creek that caused that reactor to shut down because of a uh, loss of power, or uh, Byron, Illinois, which also had to scram one of its reactors because external power was lost because of a, a fire that they actually couldn't fine. So that one's still under investigation. That just happened uh, at the beginning of this last week. Uh, lots of, of the typical unusual events that we saw countless weeks last year, um, almost every week, somewhere, somehow. You need electric power to safely generate electric power if you want to go nuclear. But, but the one I really want to talk about this week, the one that really just, you know, gets you all hopped up uh, is San Onofre. San Onofre in California um, had to uh, shut down its Unit 3. Uh, there uh, Unit 2 and Unit 3. Unit 1 has been offline for a very long time. It's been decommissioned, in fact. But unit, there are two reactors at San Onofre, Unit 2 and Unit 3, and they had to um, scram Unit 3 because uh, sensors were set off to a, uh, a radioactive leak. Uh, as it turns out, they discovered there was indeed a leak of radioactive water in a building that wasn't the containment building, but an auxiliary building, a building that had doors and people going in and out of them. Uh, 
and that caused them to shut that down. It's a leak in a tube in the, um, the loop that powers the turbine. It's not the loop that goes through the reactors, but uh, as I explain at uh, great length in, in the story today, uh, that doesn't mean it's not ra radioactive because tritium, radioactive hydrogen, very tiny molecules, teeny tiny molecules, and uh, they can go from uh, one loop to the other loop. Turbine steam is still itself, uh, to some degree, radioactive, and uh, some of that water leaked. Uh, when they vent steam, often it's that steam, that tritium-laced steam, that they vent, and uh, that happened in, for instance, Byron, Illinois, this this uh, month, this last month as well. But anyway, back to San Onofre. So, so there was that leak, and that caused them to shut down uh, Unit Three. But um, Unit Two is actually the scarier one because Unit Two has already been shut down uh, for what was considered to be a routine uh, refueling and maintenance pit stop, like a two-month pit stop. But during the inspections of this, they discovered that. Uh, a vast number of the uh, three-quarter inch tubes that that run between uh, the um, the heating elements and the, the turbine these these tubes uh, had degraded had degraded substantially two of them to the extent where they will have to be completely taken out of service uh, 60 something of them degraded by at least 20 percent um, another 800 I think have degraded by like 10 percent now these tubes, I know that these facilities were opened in the early 80s, but these tubes are almost brand new. In 2009 and uh, 2010, uh, these, all of these tubes were replaced. They, they did a complete, like, makeover. Uh, San Onofre makeover, home makeover, special edition. I'm screwing that one up. Um, and, and so these are, these are like new tubes. And as, uh, as many a uh, nuclear regulatory commissioner will tell you, or the researchers they hire, kind of alarming. Uh, you expect this kind of degradation after decades, not after a year and a half, two years. So this says either these tubes were improperly manufactured, improperly installed, or improperly maintained. Maybe all three. Not, not beyond the realm of possibility. But shows you how many different places you can screw up and, and uh, risk great harm at a, at a nuclear facility right then and there. But more importantly, maybe, uh, I mean, they caught it, right? Now we have to decide what to do about it. This, this facelift cost $670 million. Uh, to put that in context, that's $135 million more than the entire federal loan guarantee for Solyndra, the, the failed solar company. Uh, I talk about that in the story as well. But, but uh, more importantly, this takes San Onofre, both of its units, offline for God knows how long while they inspect all of these tubes and probably have to replace a good number of them, I mean, if they're going to be responsible about it. And this, this gets to, again, that point that you know, nuclear power is not an efficient way to generate electricity. A darn stupid way to boil water, as Bucky Fuller said. Uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of nuclear advocates will chime in and say, oh yes, yes, nuclear is very expensive when you're building it. To build the plants, phenomenally expensive. Some will even admit, without federal help, you couldn't build any more nuclear facilities, which is, you know, 100% true. You can't build one without federal loan guarantees. Um, but that once these plants are up and running, you know, they basically run 24-7, 365, generating power, uh, and, and that's, you know, sort of indispensable, somehow economical. But the fact is that they don't run 24-7, 365. San Onofre not generating one ounce of power, not one kilowatt of power right now, all right? Uh, neither is Wolf Creek in Kansas, one of the two Byron reactors also not churning out anything. Look at 2011 and whether it's North Anna or Calvert Cliffs or Palisades which was shut down five different times last year or a, a plant in uh, St. Lucie, Florida which had to be shut down because it was sworn by jellyfish. It also killed a lot of endangered groupers but that's a whole other story. Um, or, or perhaps the Crystal River plant, which is, you know, one of America's prize uh, nuclear facilities, it hasn't generated one kilowatt in, in almost two and a half years, uh, and probably won't, even under best case scenario, until 2014. 
assuming they can find 2.5 billion dollars to fix the thing because it's that broken. 